Marie Louise. Yes. And um, I have a question about the soul. Um, can you say us what is the soul? What is that? What you are talking about? When you imagine the cosmic soul, the vastness, you know, the soul, when that, when that individualizes itself and takes an individuality within each being to impulse that being into action through its life, that thing which has individualized is what one calls the soul. It is the antaratman, it's antar, it's within, large, large, the vastness, the consciousness, individualized is the atman, mm -hmm. the soul. That soul is not emptiness, it is not silence. These are concepts that have been imposed on you by religions, because what religions do is, they in a sense take the divinity out of you and place it outside you and then mediate, right? Between you and, and the divinity, which is God. While the soul is meant to be something within, it's experience when a person grows up in a culture which is influenced by religion, they will always feel its silence and emptiness. Because religion has created that, that genetic imprint which is inherited that the soul is actually emptiness and silence and then the connect is outside with God. So it's, it's a nebulous sort of a something, you don't really know what it is. But when you pierce beyond that, that barrier of fear and anger and guilt and fundamental emotions that keep you trapped in a religious trap and you pierce beyond that, then you reach something which is actually there, which is material in nature and which impulses. So it's not silence, it's an impulse. It's not emptiness, it's fullness. And that experience can only be had if you're able to pierce beyond that, if you're fearless enough to pierce beyond it, go, 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 go. And at one point what happens, you start to feel as if you're abandoning God because you're going somewhere in a surrendered state which has been, has been, you know, imprinted into you as being somewhere you oughtn't to go. And you pierce beyond, no, I want to reach the truth, I go, I go. I surrender, I surrender, I move, 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 move. And at one point you start to feel that it is not emptiness there, it is not that there is something fuller than the fullest. So you have to pierce beyond that because that is a barrier instituted by religion. It institutes it over a period of time, it grows into a firm barrier. And we've seen that during the immersives Especially recently we had an immersive in Rome and we really saw that there is that much that is there as a barrier, especially in those that have grown up in cultures influenced by the Abrahamic religions. Those who have grown up in, in subcontinental traditions, I can't even call it spiritual traditions, just they don't have that fear because they they've grown up with the idea and the knowledge of the Antaratman. It's, it's, it's there, you know. And it's an amazing discovery for somebody who can pierce through to find, I'm not alone. I'm not alone. The soul is very living, it's very present, I'm not alone. And the fear of being alone just falls away in a minute, you know, in a second, when that experience happens. And that's the beginning of the deepening of the self-realization process until, of course, the body drops and, and the soul moves on. So if you move into surrender, you know, surrender, sir. I want to feel what I knew as a child, you knew it, that's the thing. So 
that's its nature, that's its impulse, that's its flow, that's its command. And this bends to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I had hard times in my life, I was praying. Can you say something about, so who is praying to whom? It's now my question. Um, I felt a lot of surrendering by praying in, you know, in difficult situations. So I, I had no other choice than surrendering. And, but um, yes, I would like to hear something about praying. That is dependent on the culture you actually grow up in, because if you, if you grow up, let's say, in a, in a Western, Western European culture, you would actually pray to God, or you would pray to Jesus, let's say, if you were growing up in a, in a more Islamic space, you would be praying to Allah, basically. It is something outside yourself. So there is always a sense of expectancy involved, and it is always from here to that, from this to that. Whereas when you have the possibility of the soul as well, the prayer, when it's experienced in this system as a movement to the soul, is experienced as surrender. And when it is experienced outward, it's experienced as a request, as an asking for. Help me, Lord, protect me, give me an answer. Or you pray to the angels, Archangel Michael, help me. Or you pray to the, to the gods, to Shiva, to Krishna, to, to the devis. You know, mm -hmm. the outward motion is more of asking for something and the inward motion cannot be asking for something because you don't identify it as something that's going to give you something. So it, it is a surrender state that happens. There are grey zones here and there, but this is roughly what those processes are. So it's very interesting if you have suddenly both, you know, suddenly you know that you can actually be in surrender to the soul. And yes, you can pray to the cosmic soul when you feel that. It's like a two-way process. One of those inward ways has been, in a sense, cut off by the advent of religion. And what spirituality does is it takes that and reinstates it, says, go inward, that's your master, that's the guru, that's the soul, that's the truth, now move inward. This moves into surrender to that. Thank you. I think I am. Okay, I'm just going to take one here and then there, two, cone. 